three parts of your mind, you're what? Subconscious. Subconscious. In your creative subconscious. Yeah. And the consciousness job is what? What's his job? Perceive. To perceive. And how do you perceive with your, your conscious mind? What does it mean to be conscious, first of all? What's that word mean? Aware. Aware or awake. Okay, so how do you perceive with your conscious mind? Yes, okay, so you see, what else? How do you, you hear? Give me the other two, other three. Smell. Smell. Feel. Taste. All right. So that's how you get all that stuff through your conscious mind, right? So you get, and your conscious means to be awake or aware. Um, and you see, hear, smell, taste, and feel with your conscious mind, right? So what happens to that information? Once you get in your conscious mind, it goes where? You process it and it gets stored in your subconscious. So this is kind of like your hard drive, right? So it gets stored there. Whether it's right, wrong, or otherwise, it gets stored in your subconscious. Um, one thing that Lou will talk about later, um, and that I'll talk about now, are these things that affect what gets stored, and they're filters. And we'll talk about what some of those filters might be, okay? But your conscious mind gets all this stuff, it gets stored in your, your subconscious, and um, then it gets enacted by your creative subconscious. And what is your creative subconscious's job? Yeah, maintain sanity. What's that mean? Okay. So it filters information. What else? What, what does it mean to be sane? <laughs> you take a pill for it. <laughs> ah. All right. Okay. So your subconscious stores your truth, your habits, your attitudes, your beliefs, right? So it records all of that stuff, everything that goes on with you. Your creative subconscious, its job is to keep the, out, the inward image that you have in your mind um, and make the outside world look just like the inside world, right? So if I were to say that this pen is orange, right, you would say what to me? No, it's not. It's black, right? That's what you would say. Now, could I convince you with a um, million dollars each that this that this pen was orange? Don't mean the money. All right. So it's whatever color I say it is, right? With a million dollars each. <laughs> Twenty bucks. <laughs> Right? So now, so now you have to maintain sanity because is it more sane to get the million dollars or to, to be right about this being black? With, it de okay. Yeah, I'd be happy with the million, right? But some people would say it's more important for me to say what is right than to say how much something costs or what I get to benefit, right? No, 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 no. And it's not good or bad. It's just that's just kind of how uh, how it is. All right. <laughs> I do it. <laughs> Six pack. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, um, 
But your creative subconscious, its job is to create sanity, all right? It's to, to create or maintain the reality that you know is true, okay? Um, when we talked about that allegory of the cave, right, this is the process that was kind of going on, right? Why, were, why did the prisoners not want to be freed when the, the, when the other prisoner came back and said, you know what, we can, we can get out of here, let's do something, right? What part of this were they, were they battling him on? Okay. It could be their conscious battling. I would say it was their creative subconscious. They didn't want to change. Why? It's because it's uncomfortable. All right. They were comfortable where they were, but change is uncomfortable. Right? They needed to maintain some sense of reality. What do you think he was, when the guy left the cave and was talking about the world, how do you think, what did it sound, what would it have sound like if you were one of those chained people? And this person comes back into the cave and is talking about these trees and they, they have these arm things and there are these little things on them called leaves and they're green. What might be going through those people's minds? They were thinking that he would, they would think he was the crazy one, right? Because their reality says, what about trees? There are none. They haven't seen any. They haven't seen real trees, right? Or, or that the trees that they know shadow. are shadow-shaped, right? They don't have little things called leaves or whatnot, okay? So your creative subconscious, its job is to, to maintain your sanity or your uh, reality. It creates nothing. Um, All right. So my creative subconscious, its job is to maintain reality and sanity. If I grew up thinking that I am nothing, that I'm bad, that uh, everything I do goes wrong, the creative subconscious doesn't care what the message is, right? Its job is to what? It's to make it true, to maintain the sanity, all right? So if, So how do you... How would you change some of this stuff? How would you go about changing this? Reprogramming your thoughts. Reprogramming your thoughts. I have a question. Yep. Is, will we have been told us that the 500 pound pen weighs, or the 500 pound desk weighs 10 pounds? Will we be able to move it? Probably not. Hypnosis is a real interesting thing because it will give you suggestions that you think you are, that are possible. You may be able to do it, I would say, depending on what your physical strength was. Um, like if, the, if I gave you the suggestion to fly. I couldn't fly. <laughs> I would say you might not be able to fly. Don't you know. fly from a high place. Right. Don't, <laughs> don't jump off a, a thing. But the power of suggestion is... is um, and it's different for different people. Some people are more susceptible to it, and then other people aren't. Okay. Yeah. But I would say that you, you know, I mean, there are definitely cases where people um, under stress have been unable to move cars or all sorts of stuff. So I would say that um, it is a possibility. Okay. So let's, uh, we're going to swing over to some other diagrams. This is an aeroplane. I tried to make a good aeroplane. So, um, two things about an aeroplane. Um, when, you, when you go up in the plane, that is called the what? Nope. We're, we're at uh, 42,000 feet, that's the altitude. Elevation or altitude, right? So that's the altitude, it's how high. Uh, altitude. It's how high, all right? Um, so what's it called when the airplane kind of tilts to one side or the other? What is that called? Does anybody know? No? Establishing. Okay. Th th that is called... Uh, 
So the altitude is how high you go, right? And the attitude of the airplane is the direction at which you lean. Okay? So those are those are two things. I'll come those are two important things and I'll come back to those in just a second. What is automatic pilot? What's automatic pilot? When the plane is flying itself. When the plane is flying itself. When it's on cruise control for the most part, right? So it's flying itself. So let's say um, I'm going to I'm flying north, right? So my automatic pilot is set at north. So I'm kicking it back with the other captain and you know talking to the stewards and stewardesses and you know just having a good old time, uh, and uh, and so uh, I get a, a radio signal. I said uh, we have some bad weather coming in the north. Uh, please. Um, uh, change your direction and blah 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 blah. So I, I so I hear about the storm. So I I look at my other captains and they're like, go ahead and make the changes. So I'm like, okay. So I, I grab the steering wheel and then I start to uh, to change my direction. Right. So if this is north, this would be east. Okay. So I start uh, I start moving the plane east. And everything is fine, and I see the storm, and we're going to pass the storm, and that kind of stuff. And what would happen if, uh, so I'm just driving the plane, what would happen if I let go of the steering wheel? It would go back to north. It would go back to north. Why? Because I didn't turn off my autopilot, right? I didn't, I didn't change my uh, cruise control, all right? I didn't change it. Um, so I could... If I apply this, if I'm the plane, and I want to be different than what I am, right? I want to change the direction of my life. I could act different, right? I could, um, if if I'm not educated, and I, you know, I want to act educated, that would be pretty easy for me, right? <laughs> I could act smart and talk smart and all of those things, right? But if someone said, uh, "Sir," Are you supposed to be here? It would be pretty easy for me to be like, what are you talking about? I'm supposed to be here, right? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, yes, I'm supposed to be here, right? Right? So I, I would go right back to what my autopi autopilot has said, right? So could I change the direction of this, this plane without even touching the steering wheel? Could I do that? Maybe. Maybe. How might I be able to do that? Reprogram what? The direction. the direction. Reprogram my autopilot, right? So if I reprogram my autopilot here, so I type in the little codes or whatever and reprogram it, my plane's going to go where? East, right? And I, need, I, don't, I don't have to act any different. I don't have to do anything different. I just let the plane do it, right? Your subconscious, is your autopilot, okay? So if you want to change something in your life, you don't have to act different with your consciousness, right? I don't have to put on, uh, I mean, I could put on different clothes and look different, but I'm going to act the same because I have the same truth, I have the same habits, I have the same attitudes, and I have the same beliefs, right? So if you want to change how you see, hear, smell, taste, feel, then you need to change your truth, your habits, your attitudes, and your beliefs. And you do that through your subconscious. All right? So I'm changing my, my autopilot. So the great thing about, another great thing is um, altitude is how high you want to go. Right? And we'll talk more about that later. But I want to get to this, this idea of attitude, the direction in which you lean. Okay? Um, if I said I want to uh, keep you guys here till six o'clock, and you guys definitely want to go at, uh, you guys wanted to go at two o'clock, right? You guys would say I have a what? What kind? Of, what would I have? Would I have? I'm having delusions, right? 
I would have a bad attitude, right? Because I'm like, guys, why don't you want to stay here? Let's do it. And you guys would be like, oh, we need to be out of here at two, right? Mm -hmm. So you would say I have a bad attitude, and what would I say? I would say you had a bad attitude, right? The direction, attitude is the direction at which you lean, and we are leaning in opposite directions, right? Has anybody ever had an interaction with a teenager that you want to do something and they want to do something else? They come to you with a what? A bad attitude, right? <laughs> or, damn it! I'm going to my room. You know, all that's a bad attitude. <laughs> oh, oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> yeah, I deal with them every day. Bad kids, and I love them. I love them. No, but, but they come with attitudes, all right? And people have good attitudes when what? When you're leaning in the same direction, right? When you're leaning in the same direction. What determines an attitude? Okay, you can determine an attitude. The things you do, situation, experiences. Your belief. Your belief, okay? I'll offer you that a goal determines an attitude. Example, a goal determines an attitude. Example. If I have a teenager and their goal is to go out with their friends and my goal is that they stay and do the dishes, the goal determines the attitude, right? Because if their goal was to go out with their friends and my goal was to go out with their friends, we're leaning in the same direction, right? So we both would have good attitudes, all right? Does that make sense at all? Okay. Good. So attitude is determined by your goal. And your goal is a part of what you need to create in your subconscious. Okay? Last piece, and then I will let you go. And if your goal is to buy a house and change the play, happens. That's right. <laughs> but, that, but that also, this is... But, but that's not, that's a great, I mean, that's a great example. When you talk about credit, you can change this stuff, but to, to get to the root of it, because I can like, never mind, but to get to the root, to get to the root, you need to change the, the subconscious. No, it's not, it's not that juicy. All right. So quickly, what is power? What is power? It's authority. It's what else? Energy. Energy. It's not quite energy. It's, it's related to energy. Knowledge. It's not quite knowledge, but it's related to knowledge. Scientists, science people, anybody. Okay, it is a force to do what? To be in control. All right. Have control. The ability to control something or things. Ability. Ability. A B I L I T. Power. The ability to do work. And that's the scientific definition. It's the ability to do work. If I have lots of money in my pocket, do I have power? Only if I have the ability to use it, right? So if I have, uh, if I have, um, never mind, I won't, I won't go on with that. All right. So power is the ability to do work. All right. So to get things done. So social power, um, relationship power, um, economic power is the ability to get things done. Right. So there is a quote that I love from Star Wars uh, from the little green guy Yoda. Right. And Yoda says, there is no try. Only do or do not. Does anybody remember that? Yes. Yeah. Did you say him in the last movie? He was off the hook. He was <laughs> and bouncing around. I was like, oh, look at the little green guy. All right. So there is um, potential. Did I spell that right? P O P O T E N T I A. I'm glad you guys bear with me. What is potential? 
possibility. That's exactly right. Potential is the possibility. It's the stored up energy, right? So potential is uh, your stored uh, possibility of something, right? And potential is um, captured in words like can, right? I can do this. I can be nice, but I'm not, right? Should, would, 